Today we're going to be talking about my top five least favorite masks in horror of all time. Let's go. <laughs> Greetings everyone. Hello. My name is Nightshade. This is The Night Shift, a place where we discuss, create, and collect all things spooky. Two weeks ago we discussed my top five favorite masks in horror, and we had some technical issues, and this video was supposed to be up last week, but we're doing it now. So today we're talking about my top five least favorite masks in horror of all time. Starting with number five, which is the Peach Fuzz Mask from the movie Creep. Now I do love the concept of this movie. It is a very interesting idea of what they were going for in this movie. There are parts that are genuinely creepy. However, when the main antagonist breaks out a mask, it is eye-rollingly cringy. I might look like I eat you up. <sighs> Now, some people that I've talked to thought it was a genuinely creepy mask and thought it was terrifying. Those people are referred to as normies. However, I myself find this werewolf mask to be cringy as hell. Now, it looks like a cheap werewolf mask that you can pick up at Spirit Halloween. And usually a store-bought mask really does it for me, but this one does not. Like, to me, it just reads as super try-hard and corny. And that's coming from me, a cornball in a mask on YouTube. But yeah, it's not a good-looking mask, and the scenes that you see it in are terribly cringy, so that definitely had to make my top five least favorite horror movie mask. And that leads us to number four, which is the Leslie Vernon mask from Behind the Mask, The Rise of Leslie Vernon. Now, to be entirely clear, I love this movie. There is a lot of Easter eggs for horror nerds like us. The concept of the movie is awesome and original. The acting in the movie is pretty decent for what it is. And what it is is an awesome, cheap horror movie. That being said, I'm not a fan of Leslie Vernon's mask. The face sculpt is a little bit on the derpy side, and they definitely went with the less is more approach which normally I love however the sculpt left me wanting more definitely not my favorite mask however it is one of my favorite horror movies and if you haven't checked it out I highly recommend you go do so and with that being said it's on to number three which is the baby face mask from happy death day now this mask is not scary in the slightest it is very derpy looking it's not intimidating at all and it's way too big now whenever I first heard of this movie I was actually really excited to go check it out I mean it's a groundhog's day type movie Movie with a slasher in it what's not to like like the concept of the movie is good there's a lot of cool kills in that movie but again it falls short for me because the mask is terrible now this mask is not scary at all and it's not even a good sculpted mask and that's not to say a baby faced killer mask isn't an awesome concept like if we would have gotten the distortions unlimited baby face like that would have been genuinely creepy honestly they could have done a lot better and this movie would have been a lot more tolerable if they used a different type of baby mask if they had to have a baby as the mascot and I'm going to bring up again that Distortions Unlimited would have been the better option for the babyface killer. The Happy Death Day babyface killer mask doesn't do it for me, and that's why that made my list. Which brings us to the controversial number two, which is the K&B mask from Scream. Now I know, there's a lot of people out there that really love the K&B sculpt. I am not one of those people. Now Scream is one of my all-time favorite horror movies. It's probably the very first horror movie I ever watched. And it's the movie that got me into masks. However, the K&B effects mask just pulls me out of the movie every time I see it. Now I'm sure a lot of the people watching this know what the K&B mask is, but if you don't know what it is, I'm going to give you a quick little synopsis of what it is. Pretty much whenever they were creating Scream, they ended up finding a ghost face mask and they really wanted to use it, they really liked the concept of it. However, they didn't have the rights to use it yet. So K&B effects made a legal parody of the mask. They got it as close as they could legally to match the peanut eyed ghost from Fantastic Faces. And it didn't quite look right, so they ended up reaching out to Fun World to see if they could use their mask. And Fun World said yes, and the rest is history. And don't get me wrong, a lot of people love the K&B mask. However, whenever I see it in the film, it's very jarring and really kind of takes me out of the movie for a second. However, don't get me wrong, still love this movie. It doesn't take me out of it enough to not enjoy it. It's just whenever I see it, it's jarring. And Birkbench Designs does the best one of these of all time, and I'm probably going to get one and unbox it on this channel. Even though I personally don't like this mask that much, I'm still going to get one for the collection. Now, this mask is too wide, the mouth is too short, and the eyes are entirely too big, and it's just very jarring whenever you see it on camera. You see it a lot in the opening sequence, and it's also featured heavily in Principal Hembry's death scene. And it's seen a couple times throughout, 
out, but you know, I'm not going to nitpick and tell you everything. You can go look it up for yourself. But yeah, it really just takes me out of the movie whenever I see it, and for that reason, it had to make my number two. And we're about to get to number one, however, we're going to hit some dishonorable mentions, which consists of the Satan mask from Satan's Little Helper. It's just a cheap, goofy mask that tries entirely too hard to be scary, and it's just not. Kind of reminds me of a very bad mushroom head mask for some reason. Not a very good mask at all. Our second dishonorable mention is the K&B FX mask from Halloween H2O. God, K&B just kind of sucks at making masks, huh? Now this mask looks absolutely terrible. It's got this big forehead, just kind of looks like an alien in a wig. Now this was going to make the number one on my list, but it's not featured enough in the movie to justify putting it on the actual list itself, especially when I you compare it to the number one on our list which is the Halloween 5 Michael Myers mask. I cannot stand this mask. What were they thinking? Oh my god. Like the mask looks like Nicolas Cage with a mullet. The neck is very long. The sculpt itself looks very chunky like almost like it was made out of play-doh. The eyes look super weird. The mouth looks super dumb. The forehead on this one is also terrible and every time I see that mask on camera it just looks so bad. And I mean there's other bad masks in the Halloween franchise but that one is so bad. Like I don't like the Halloween 6 mask Mask, but it at least looks like it's trying to be Michael Myers, but it doesn't give off Michael Myers vibes. It just doesn't look good at all. And that's why it had to make my number one because yeah, it is my least favorite mask in the entire franchise. But yeah, that is my list of my top five least favorite masks in horror of all time. Now let me know your least favorite masks in horror in the comments below. I look forward. And if you made it this far and aren't subscribed already, why don't you go ahead and do that for me, please? I would greatly appreciate it. And that is just about going to do it for me. If you liked the video, let me know by leaving me a like. Comment down below what you want to see on the channel next. I will do my best to accommodate. And until next time, my name is Nightshade. This has been the Night Shift, and I will see you in the next video. Goodbye, my friends.